Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you everything that's happening in and around the Missoula area. I got a stop-motion video from our Saturday drop-ins that just started last Saturday. Uh, there is no city council, so I have no city council report for you guys, but I got plenty of events, news, and things happening here at MCAT that will keep you guys busy for the next couple days. There's definitely a lot going on, and I'm going to try to get to it as soon as possible. So let's get off things with some weather. Currently, it is 36 degrees outside. Um, you can expect showers hours to be likely today and pretty much throughout the week. There are some ch ch um, slight chances of snow, it looks like, uh, later on this week, starting Thursday. And then, of course, Friday, you have that rain uh, slowly go down to a 30 to 20 percent chance uh, Friday night with, with lows into the 30. So we're getting those freezing temperatures starting today, and it will be going on through the week. And then, of course, by Saturday, you can see slight chances of snow showers, and then it's going to be mostly cloudy. So Expect this to kind of happen for another week or so, and then we might actually have uh, a nice week or so after that, because that's usually how a lot of the uh, uh, um, seasons go, and the seasons change, and they always change back, and then they change again, and just before you think uh, fall actually happens, it's already the middle of winter, so that's kind of what's happening. Um, there is uh, a bunch of trees are changing uh, colors, and it is a great uh, basic week for any uh, typical fall type activities, in which I will get to with your Missoula events later on in the show through uh, MissoulaEvents.net. So let's kick things off with a little bit of things that are happening locally. Um, so apparently, um, Missoula has the most dangerous intersections in the nation, according to studies. The city contains, actually, it's, I think it's in the state. Um, the city contains the top five most dangerous intersections um, for crashes in Montana. That's right, not nation. Sorry, discard, disregard that. Um, with the top four most common crashes located on Reserve Street. Reserve Street's junction with Mullen Road top the list with 121 different crashes during the three-year period the study uh, took place, which was 2014 through the 2016 reports, which averages out to a crash every nine days. That crossing was followed by uh, the on the list uh, by Reserve's intersection with Brook Streets, West Broadway's, and 3rd Street, with the corner of East Broadway and Van Buren Street rounding out to uh, top five. So... But there may be a solution. In Billings, a uh, Billings law firm that conducted a study uh, pointed to roundabouts as one of the useful ways to reduce the number of crashes, cited in an Insurance Institute for Highway Safety study that found that reduced crashes by 37% because of roundabouts. The reduction could be attributed to drivers um, not trying to beat yellow lights and the fact that traffic following in one direction uh, minimizes the risk of head-on collisions. And uh, just the other day, I was just uh, driving by Mullen and the reserve intersection, and I saw that people were basically not following the crosswalk, so um, even some pedestrians are uh, risking it totally going to, um, to and from the Mullen Street. So uh, follow the lights, because you never know, because <laughs> one in every nine days, a crash happens on Reserve Street, so you may want to look out for that. Um, in the state, the second largest coal-fired uh, pl power plant in the West, Coal Strip, is facing opposition on various levels that will likely close the Southeast Montana power plant before the clean power plant's prescribed out cuts to carbon dioxide emissions would have been realized anyway. So uh, a while ago during the Obama era uh, presidency, um, there was a Clean Air Act um, and they were asking the state of Montana to reduce their carbon emissions by 47%, the highest um, um, basically cut of any other state uh, in the nation. So uh, one of the things that, uh, so this would be a state-by-state -state level with Montana cutting their carbon emissions by nearly half by 2030. Coal strip is on the path for closure anyways. Um, it would have been expected to fully comply with the clean power plan um, regardless of, of the plan even being in action. So uh, the four unit power plants, two oldest units, are slated for closure no later than 2022 um, under the settlement terms of the clean air lawsuit brought up by the Sierra Club and Montana Environment Information Center. Plan or not, coal strip is on the path uh, regardless of state and federal regulations. Um, and this, of course, was this from the, uh, the Billings Gazette. And the first story was from the Missoulian. So, um, in the nation, at least 13 people have died in intense wildfires that have destroyed thousands of buildings in Northern California, where firefighters are battling 17 large blazes in the state wine country, including Napa and Sonoma um, counties. Uh, together, they have burned 115,000 acres, according to uh, Cal Fire. Uh, according to NPR, several fires spread with intense uh, speed after being reported on Sunday. Since then, some 
1,500 structures, including hundreds of homes, have been lost. At least two uh, wineries were destroyed, and others have been damaged. Napa wineries that were affected include uh, uh, Signorello and William Hill. Ten thousands of people have fled to the fire's potential um, paths, and along with concern over homes and property, many are also worried that animals who were left behind, including zoos and stables. Uh, two large fires are raging near the Napa County. Uh, the Tubbs Fire has burned 27,000 acres. Um, the Atlas Fire has burned 25,000 acres. Fire officials are not offering a containment estimate of for those blazes. Um, the Redwood C um, Complex Fire west of Mendocia, Men Mendocino. Oh, Mendocino, sorry, National Forest, consumed 21,000 acres, and east and the east of Yuba uh, County, the Cascade Fire burns 11,500 acres with 15% contained on Tuesday. Um, I also took the liberty of looking at some of the Incineweb, which is a website where you can look at fires from certain radars, and they have uh, infrared scans of the fires, so they're able to determine the source of the fires and also the spread of the fires. So I was able to kind of see in Montana as well about how our fires are doing. Most of the fires here in Montana are 87% uh, uh, containment is basically the lowest uh, percent of containment uh, that I've seen in all the fires across Montana. And it seems like most of the fires are getting mopped up at this point. Also in the nation, um, it, it happening more virally online as well. Um, have anyone seen the, uh, there's a BET hip hop award that happened over the weekend and Eminem freestyled about Trump. Um, or should I say against Trump? Uh, check it out. And it was during the Hip Hop Awards freestyle cipher called Calm Before the Storm. So you guys should check that out uh, if you don't mind uh, um, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's rap and there's some explicit language. So warning on that. And I suggest you guys can check it out if you want to. But another thing that's happening in the news is it's the first day of National Pride for Iceland. Uh, the, county has the country has qualified for the FIFA World Cup for the first time in history. Qualifications were secured in the team beat Kosovo. 2-0, to zero, Iceland's PM revealed that the secret of just how the tiny nation, Iceland's population uh, is less than 400,000 people, surprised the pundits and defeated the, uh, defied the odds. So they'll be uh, basically in the FIFA World Cup in 2018 uh, for the first time ever. So that's kind of... Uh, what's happening in and around the nation, the world, and here locally in Missoula. Um, I have some programs for you guys. So here are some of the new programs that are happening on MCAT. And then when I come back, I'll talk about MCAT news and what MCAT's gonna be doing today. So Nick and I today are going to zoom in on one particular project that we've been really excited about at Spectrum, but which um, we feel will have a strong impact on the creation of the new library museum complex. And before that, we'll be shaping our current museum on Tool Avenue on the west side. Uh, many of you, I imagine, know Spectrum from our museum in Missoula. Um, we actually, we've been downtown, before that we were on campus, but we just reopened at Tool Crossing, and I hope you'll visit. Um, but Actually, of the 55,000 people we serve annually, a majority of them we actually reach outside of our museum walls in communities around the state. I'm exactly the same age today when my dad started doing Young Men and Fun. And that's good in some ways. I've got some time left. But there have been four books about that fire, the fifth one coming out this fall. <coughs> What's left? What's left is to go beyond what I normally do and get down a couple of layers deeper. And it's very hard, and I'm very tired of this work. I'm very tired of about kids getting killed and burned to death and spending time with their families. I've had enough. So I talked to Jack about this, and he said, all right, let me tell you a story. He's told me the spotted owl story. We all know that's how Jack got to be chief. He got, came up with a compromise on the spotted owl in the Northwest, and Bill Clinton liked it, and he became chief. And then he wouldn't fire somebody that Bill Clinton wanted him to fire, so they fired him. An honorable career. And he said, there's a poster up there. There's a little spotted owl, and he's at the crossroads. And to make a long story short, Jack said, you know, there's a fork in the trail. And when you take a fork, don't look back. You know, as the lumberjacks, they were in the northeast of Maine, then they went to the Midwest, um, again, using rivers. So they, used, they did the same thing they knew about. Um, 
you know, there's Bonner just absolutely plugged. You know. The Wanigans, uh, as they work their way down, uh, slushing out the, um, the dead man behind rocks and sandbars, Wanigan would come down, and that's where they ate and slept. Um, the Bat Toes, they were uh, like a flat bottom boat, um, very little draft. And um, um, the museum over in Coeur d'Alene has one. But what does that remind you of today going down the Missouri? Same thing. Flat bottom, low draft. Yeah, they stole the idea. So. <laughs> And that was the Missoula City Band at the last point. Um, you can find these programs and more by logging on to our website, MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your reference to everything Missoula. Um, we go out there and we film a lot of programs that are presented by the community, uh, either through uh, media assistant grants or by request. Um, and if you want to request any programs or any ha have MCAT do any programs, uh, all you got to do is go to Request Event Recording. It'll tell you exactly how to do it. And you can also submit a program. So if you already have a program, and you want it to air on our channel and you want it to be available on our website you can um, basically click on that link where it says submit a program and you can go through the whole process all you can you can just give us a link to a YouTube channel or YouTube video and we can put it up here on our channel but also we have our own video on demand website so if you click on any one of these links right here you can go to channel 189 and you get to see basically the most recent uploads to our video on demand so it looks like in the footsteps of Norman McLean festival part one so you get to see all this wonderful stuff um, Missoula City Band Concert Series um, you get to see um, number seven which is the more recent one that you guys just saw so um, I'm excited there's a lot of great uh, programs that happen on MCAT that you guys can get involved with and also if you're interested in being a part of MCAT we do orientation uh, every Wednesday at let's see orientation yes 5 30 p.m. so if you go to our page and it's a slideshow it'll move to this page and we are here for you and every Wednesday MCAT offers tour and training beginnings at 5 30 p.m. click on the image to read our volunteer producers handbook and come and see us so we're all about uh, production and video production so if you're interested in doing that kind of stuff um, we're more than um, capable of helping you get things started here or uh, get things started on YouTube if you want to be more of a YouTube kind of uh, personality you're more than welcome to come on down here to get your feet wet and kind of figure it out for yourself and then once you, we can send you off this is more of a good little stepping stone for anybody who wants to start off with visual media so I want to talk about that but also I want to also mention that we do have our uh, Saturday drop-ins so every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. for well basically every single Saturday until the end of uh, May, I believe. Um, usually, we kind of Memorial Day weekends are are uh, basically not really the last weekend, but it's usually like uh, that's when we usually cut it off. We kind of like start after uh, Labor Day, but we kind of had a late start this year because uh, uh, some of our software program kind of had a little problem here and there. But we got it all figured out, and we're all ready to go. We started our last week last Saturday. It's ten dollars per drop in. Any kid that is interested in being a part of that, you can. Um, it's basically open. Anyone will be able to receive any kids, uh, no matter how many kids want to do it, and it's open from 1 to 5 p.m. If you want to do a half day to kind of think about it, you can have your kid here from 3 to 5 or even 1 to 3, depending upon it. Usually it's good to send them here by 1 to 3 and then come back and just be like, hey, do you like it here? And then usually they like to stick around just to kind of see it through. It's a lot of time, but it also teaches patience and is a great resource for those kids as well. And another great resource for you guys to learn more about my morning show is going to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com 
slash wake up Missoula. So now she made you write it out twice. I talk about all sorts of things that are happening in and around Missoula, including some pop culture references along the way. Um, I don't think I've ever dabbed on the show before, and I don't think I ever will. So uh, maybe not too many pop culture references. But without further ado, I have a stop motion video for you guys. And then when I come back, I'll talk about events. And this stop motion uh, movie is called The Axe and the Wall. So what do you want me to do today, boss? It's quite simple. I want you to put that on there. We're building a uh, wall, I think remember? we've got company, sir. Oh, well, then you should take care of him. Uh, sir, I don't think he's stopping. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there a second. You, you, uh, we're building a wall here. You can't just, you know... This pathway is closed off, sir. You gotta go around. I don't have a good feeling about this guy, sir. Oh, nonsense. I'll just explain to him carefully that... Oh, oh, I'm sorry there, sir. Um, it's just like... <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you think you're doing? Whoa, okay, okay, uh, put that down, um, uh, uh, man. Listen, I don't want any trouble. Yeah. Alright, fine, do it. I said do it! Okay? Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about events that are happening in and around the Missoula area. Let's kick things off with this morning. Um, early artist program, Animals Big and Small. Zetown Arts Community Center um, is using Animals Big and Small as inspiration. Early artists will learn to tell stories through listening, playing, and uh, tactile art making. Mixed media exploration guided by the professional's youth programmer, Carlene Katner, um, is designed to assist your early artist in the cognitive preparation needed for reading, writing, and learning. Register at zootownarts.org slash uh, EAP. So it's basically it starts this morning at 9 a.m. But of course, if you missed it, you guys can check it out on ne November 15th again. Um, and this happens from 9 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Actually, it's every Wednesdays. Sorry about that. Um, so if you miss it today, you can always go next week on the 18th. So every single Wednesday leading into November 15th. Um, popsicle stick art. Uh, Families First Children's Museum is doing uh, basically popsicle popsicle stick art. You can't you can't miss it. If you're interested in doing that, that happens from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And of course, Families First Children's Museum is more like a uh, large daycare learning environment where uh, parents basically have those have kids like wander around and kind of check out some of the learning things that they have at the Families First Children's Museum. And this is just one of their events that they do there as well. Um, Afterburn Fire Season 2017. Um, fire, the press box is hosting Hosting former USFS um, Chief Forester Dale Bosworth um, will present the history of U.S. Forest Service Christi, um, Christine Daw of the USF. S, uh, so USFS will discuss the 2017 fire season, forest management policy, and other topics. Um, used outdoor gear, uh, gear sale is happening also at the university near the area. Um, if you're interested, um, they have it from 12 to 5 p.m. It is one of the largest garage sales in the west. It's in western Montana, and they do it at um, the University Center Atrium. Come by and check out all kinds of gear for your next outdoor adventure. Um, you have gear to sell, then come and drop off gear between now and 11 a.m. Um, at the UC Atrium. So uh, the after the event, come pick up any unsold gear and cash payouts between 6 and 7.30 p.m. So the whole idea is that if you have any stuff, you register your stuff there, and then if they sell it, great. If they don't, um, then you get your stuff back. So the whole idea is like they sell it for you, and you have between 12 and 5 p.m. And the uh, ODP collects 20% of selling price of items sold. So there is a, basically a price for them selling your gear for you. So, you know, it, it goes to a good, good cause. Um, middle School Writers Group at the Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. It's just to improve some writing skills and have some chocolate for uh, kids who are in 6th through ninth grade to get, get some good feedback, play with words, and eat a little chocolate. Um, National Fossil Day open house at the University of Montana starting at 5 p.m. Celebrate National Fossil Day with the UM uh, Paleontology Center, UMPC, for an open house. The UMPC uh, is open from 5 to 8 p.m. for tours and displays to research collections, fossil identifications, and more. Uh, this year, they'll be uh, highlighting the wonderful weirdos of the fossil record and in the collection, including a Burgess shell um, and Montana's very own bear gulch. 
Uh, and then once again, at 5.30 p.m., MCAT is doing our orientation. So anybody interested in learning video media or media arts, MCAT will host an orientation to get involved with MCAT. Glass uh, fusing orientation class. There is glass fusing starting at 6 p.m. at the Zutan Art Center. Uh, did you know that fused glass pieces make great presents? Um, learn how to fuse glass and surprise everyone with your Christmas list this year with a custom piece of art, the options are endless. What you will learn, glass fusing orientation class covers all the basics from design to slumping, fusing, mold making, and how to the kindling process works. And glass uh, aftercare. Additionally, you'll be oriented to the tools and glass available to you in the glass fusing studio, allowing you to come in and utilize the fusing space anytime during the business hours. So this is just an orientation, but once you get once you get past orientation, you're pretty much there to um, get it. At, at basically, if it's as available at it as it is. Um, Southgate Triangle Neighborhood Council General Meeting, Southgate Mall Community Room. There's a general meeting for Southgate Triangle Neighborhoods Council. Agenda items include Russell School, Bellevue Park, Q&A with City Council, announcements um, and public comment on non-agenda items. So this is a way to meet and greet your local government, especially if you're in the Southgate Triangle neighborhood. Um, you can ask questions and t talk about oh, which uh, um, neighborhood is the best neighborhood around. And they're going to be doing this for uh, a couple neighborhoods as well. Of course, it is election season, so you know they're going to be talking about all, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So that's kind of what's happening there. Here's some of your uh, nightly music events happening tonight. Uh, all the karaoke happening at the Eagles Lodge, Badlander, and of course the Sunrise Saloon. Um, there's Pigeons playing ping pong. It's going to be funk music at the Top Hat Lounge, and then Tech Nine with uh, multiple openers at the Wilma. So it's going to be hip hop music going to be happening at the Wilma, and there's going to be all sorts of things happening in and around the Missoula area. Of course, if you're interested in some square country dance lessons, Kathy Clark will uh, basically do some country dance lessons tonight and tomorrow night at the Sunrise Saloon starting at 7 p.m. So that's kind of um, the kind of like an overview of what's happening in the Missoula area. If you're interested in going out and doing some things, that's the best bet. So without further ado, I want to um, throw it over to an art clip that will only be playing today and on Friday, and then I don't think I'll have an art clip for a little while at least. But um, without further ado, here is an art clip, and this is, uh, I believe this is at the ga Gallery of the Visual Arts. So you can check it out until this Friday, um, but you might have to check it out before Friday because they usually tend to remove the items well before any you get a chance to see it on Friday. So um, here is uh, Gallery of the Visual Arts. Hey guys, welcome back. I want to thank our very own Rick Phillips for producing that art clip. He is the one who does all the art clips for uh, the city of Missoula, and basically it's a great way to archive all of the art that comes through Missoula, because usually with art installation it comes through and you get to miss out on it completely. So here are some of your Thursday events starting tomorrow morning at the University of Montana, the tw 37th uh, biannual, uh, biennial 
public land law conference. So the whole idea behind this is that it will be addressing the following theme, uh, bridging divides, energy, environment, and empowerment in the new era. The, uh, the event will happen um, on the 12th and the 13th, 2017. So you can go to public land and uh, resource law review link before below. Um, basically, there's a link on the website. You can go uh, to missoulaevents.net to find this for your Thursday morning and to find out uh, all the public land and, um, resources law review link. Uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Eckler Sports Center does all sorts of stuff in the morning for kids who want to get active and it's for usually y kids who are younger who aren't going to school yet but it's a uh, fun safe way for kids to uh, tumble and move around so it's basically like a giant um, um, child proof uh, a fun activity center where kids can go there. So Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Extra Sports Center, uh, you can go there and you can check that out. Uh, bridge group at the uh, Missoula Senior Center. If you like bridge and you like playing bridge, it's a card game. It's 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 the bridge card game. So they do this at 12:45 uh, p.m. Um, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays for party bridge, and all ages and skills are welcome. It's 2:25. Uh, charge for any uh, fees that cover expenses. Um, w, I mean, Y-A-A-P, Textile Sewing and Collage, Newtown Arts Community Center. Does your art, young artist itch to stitch? Um, students will have the opportunity to create their own functional designs for fellow caches and learn basic for simple clothing, and they won't stop there. Students will stretch their creative uh, um, creative um, thinking and colorful and bold textures collages that can inspire all sorts of things. So Thursdays, um, it's basically every Thursday from October 12th to November 30th and this happens from 2.30 p.m. Um, to about I would say 5 p.m. Yeah, that's right. 2.35 p.m. It's uh, $95 or $85 for members. Um, you have All About Polly, Missoula Insectarium. Uh, Polly is easily the most popular spider in the entire, in, in entire insectarium for a good reason. Her species holds the record for the largest spider in the world by mass. Um, when she is fully grown, she'll be the size of a dinner plate. Come learn about the marvelous Polly and make a life-size model to take home. So this is at the Missoula Insectarium, and this will be open from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And also, right ne basically right next door, Lego Club is happening at the um, Missoula Pub Public Library. So get to play with Legos and hang out. Um, open House is happening at the Home Resource Community Room at 5 p.m. It's called Zero by 50. Um, jo join the City of Missoula for an open house that showcases the proposed framework of the Zero by 50 Pathway to Zero Waste. I talked about it in the, on, my, uh, on my morning show, Wake Up Missoula. Um, trademark <laughs> um, and uh, during city council meetings and they're talking about how uh, basically the landfill will basically be full before 2030 and they'll have to figure out a way to uh, reduce um, waste here in the city of Missoula so they're going to talk about this and they want it to be zero by 2050 so you can go to zero by 50 it's spelled out um, by letters not the number um, zero by 50 m Missoula dot com um, write your own obituary, session two. Um, Zootown Arts Community Center is partnering with the uh, Day of the Dead, um, Festival of the Dead uh, here in Missoula. And uh, through many of us have uh, written obituaries for others. Writing uh, an obituary for yourself provides a valuable perspective on how you hope to be seen by others. As a genre of writing that can, um, presses the an autobiography in short space, obituaries compel the writer to pay close attention to the use of uh, salient incidents and grounding principles in each person's life. The, uh, the Write Your Own Obituary Workshops will take place at the ZAC, and, and it's going to be at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. And to register, you can call the ZAC at 406-549-7555. So that's 549-7555. And, uh, of course, you can always visit the website, uh, zootownarts.org. Um, um, so, anyways, a community forum, uh, like I said, uh, tonight is going to be a community forum for the uh, South Gate Triangle uh Tonight, community forum at the city council chambers. The community forum is made up of one neighborhood city council reference uh, um, council representative from each of the city's 18 neighborhood councils. It is a venue for neighborhood councils to share skills and information, and is a good place for neighborhoods to hear presentations from the community and discuss neighborhood issues. The forum is also a venue for neighborhoods to seek community-wide support for their own projects and goals. This is held every fourth. Uh, 
of uh, it's held the fourth Thursday of every month except November or December, where it is held uh, third Thursday due to the holidays. So that's happening. It's a community forum at the city council chambers. Um, you can check it out and learn about your uh, neighborhoods um, and see uh, basically who is representing your neighborhoods and more. And it also airs on MCAT as well, um, live on channel 190. So Blaze Dodgeball, and it's basically tomorrow and next Thursday are the last chances to play dodgeball. Uh, and it's, it's all adult dodgeball, so if you want to relive the old uh, painful memories of being PE in grade school, well, great! The Blaze 96.3 is hosting a um, Blaze Dodgeball is, um, for the fun games begin on Thursday. Um, and it happens until the 19th, which is next Thursday. So you get it happen, and that happens from 8 to 10 p.m. If you don't have a team, a team will be provided for you. And if you already have a, a, a team in mind, you guys work on, you guys can come together and you can basically play some dodgeball. It's the whole idea is it's a four to six adult players on each side. And this spring, and this uh, spring session was a blast, and you don't want to miss out on all the fun. So the whole that's what, kind of what's happening there. Uh, you can go to MissoulaIndoor.com. This is in the Missoula Indoor sports arena so right where you guys can have your kids uh, play this morning you could also have some fun as an adult as well so that's kind of what's happening in and around the city of Missoula but here are some of your nightly events that are happening uh, you got uh, karaoke at BFW you got kia karaoke at Dark Horse Nightliners is gonna be at country music at the Sunrise Saloon um, live jazz is gonna be at the Plonk and then you got open mic at the uh, Green Alternative Dispensary, and there's going to be some music and folk. Um, Crazy Dog Band is going to be Daf DraftWorks Brewing Company starting at 6 p.m. I believe they're probably going to about 8 or 9, depending upon how op how much uh, DraftWorks is open for. But that's kind of what's happening in and around the city of Missoula. Um, that's about it for me. If you're interested in finding out more information about me, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also find MCAT by going on to MCAT.org and following any of these links to find out more information about summer camps, um, basically um, our Saturday drop-ins, and of course get involved with MCAT and providing programs um, for our channel if you are interested in uh, basically getting out there in a television medium. So um, thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Mm -hmm.